Hello everybody, welcome to Sheena's Guides. So today I'm going to do a non-medical prescribing for uh, pharmacology sample questions. So last week I had done the sample questions from BNF. Thank you very much for all the feedback you have given me. If you have not subscribed my channel, please click on the subscribe button. Please like and share. Thank you very much. My first uh, uh, question is about classification of the medicine. Uh, the classification of medicine in pharmacology is in three categories. is the general sale list, prescription only medicine and pharmacy only medicine. Sometimes the question can be asked, um, explain, uh, define what is prescription only medicine and can you give an example. So they'll ask you for the classification and ask you for an example. The next question is what are the principles of prescribing? So it's asking about the prescri uh, prescribing pyramid and they will ask you what are the prescribing, what uh, tell me about the principles of the prescribing pyramid and that seven points that I consider the patient, which strategy, consider the choice of the product, negotiate a contract, review record and reflect. So you need to write all that thing. Um, the next question is about the uh, influence of the prescribing and that is about the single competency framework. So you know, need to know when this was single competency framework was uh, start uh, with the NICE had put forward and when was it recently updated and what is the importance of this single competency framework. So just a nutshell about that it's best to know because if a question comes on you can write about it. My next question is, what are the holistic needs of the patient? That means before you do a prescription, what should you think about? The first is, who is the prescription for? And what are the symptoms? How long this patient had the symptom for? What action has been taken so far? And what medications the patient had it before? So these things should be thought before you prescribe a drug. The next question is about the 10 principles of prescribing. So what are the 10 principles of prescribing? You should be clear about the reasons for prescribing. You should take into account of the patient's medication history before prescribing. Take into account other factors that might alter the benefits and risk of prescribing, risk of the treatment. Take into account the patient's ideas, concerns and expectation. Select effective and safe and cost-effective medicines individualized for the patient. Adhere to the national guidelines and locker formularies where appropriate. Write legal prescription using the correct documentation. Monitor the beneficial and adverse, adverse effects of the medicine. Communicate and document prescribing decisions and the reason for them. Prescribe within the limitations of your knowledge, skill and experience. It's best to know a bit about it because if you've been asked how can you efficiently write, uh, what are the things would you think before doing a prescription, you can write all these points. There are some of the definitions you have to know and one of the definition is definition of concordance. Uh, which you have to know. It's a process of prescribing and medicine taking based on a partnership. There's a couple more um, definitions you need to know. One is about the pharma pharmacotics, the drug designed into a dosage form that can be given to a patient. What is mean by pharmacokinetics? It's a, that drug that gets into the body and reaches the site of action. What is pharmacodynamics? It's a drug that acts to produce its effect on the body. And what is therapeutics? It's the effect on the body, beneficial or harmful to the patient. What are the factors responsible for the drugs to have an effect on the body? So to, the main things are to be on the right patient, at the right concentration and the right amount of time. This is a very must question. Whoever is doing a non-medical prescribing has to know this uh, uh, answer and the definitions of 
each one of them. So what are the stages involved in the pharmacokinetic process? So before that I had explained to you the definition of a pharmacokinetic. So what is the process involved? One is the absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion, what we call as ADME. So now the definition of each one of them. So what is absorption? It's the process of a drug moving from a site of delivery into the bloodstream. What do you mean by distribution? Is the reversible transfer of a drug from one location to the another within the body. So once the drug enters into the systemic circulation by absorption or by direct administration, it must be distributed into the interstitial and intracellular fluids. Metabolism is the process of chemically converting the drug and the excretion is the removal of the drugs from the body either as a metabolite or an unchanged drug. There may be different routes of excretion which is urine, bile, sweat, saliva, tears, milk and stool and the most important excretory organs are the kidney and the liver. Thank you. So next definition, what do you mean by half-life? Again, this is a very important question. It's the time required to reduce the plasma concentration to half of its original value. So a couple more definitions. Are, one is about what is adverse reaction. This refers to an undesirable drug effect. What do you mean by side effect? It refers to an unwanted but predictable response to the drug. Uh, what do you mean by toxic effect? This is usually occurs when the too much of drug has been accumulated in the client. So there are a couple of definitions. Have a look into the BNF. So there would be a couple of definitions in the BNF also. Um, on the adverse reaction side, probably you will get the definition over there. So have a look at it before you go in for the exam. The next one is, what do you mean by drug allergy? The body sees the drug as an antigen and an immune response is established against the drug. This may be an immediate response or a delayed response. A couple more simple questions are, the, what are the main route of administration for a drug to produce a local effect? And that is topical. The main route of administration of a drug to provide a systemic effect, that is oral and parental. And the main different parental administration of a drugs are the intradermal, intramuscular, intravenous. What are the different names of the different type of drug names for a drug? So there would be a chemical name, there would be a generic name, and there would be a proprietary name. If the gut motility is decreased, sorry, if the gut motility is increased, then the drug absorption is decreased. Um, so the rate of the drug absorption is greatest in the small intestine. Drug distribution what are the what may it may depend on for tissue perfusion is the high vascular organs rapidly acquire a drug levels of drug in bone may rise slowly due to due to his reduced vascularity and most of the drugs and metabolites are excreted by the kidneys i've made a couple more definitions for agonist antagonist and receptors just to keep uh, you know uh, understand about it in case if they asked you can write about it I have never been I've not been asked this question but I just thought like um, you know it's best to know what is agonism and antagonism receptors what are the main factors that affects the client's response to a drug which is that includes the body weight the larger the individual the larger the area of drug distribution so and the next is the body fat an increase in body fat means a greater um, greater squistering in the body fat and less drug activity and the presence of certain foods and the main site for drug metabolism is liver What to do when a patient has an adverse reaction, which I think most of us know, is to check the patient if he is okay, if he or she is okay, report and then record. My final question is, what are the factors which can increase the fraction of unbound drug? A renal impairment due to rise in blood urea, low plasma albumin levels in chronic liver disease and malnutrition, late pregnancies, 
increased albumin production but diluted by increased blood volume, displacement from a binding site by other drugs like example aspirin, sodium valproate, sulfamides, saturability of a plasma protein binding within the therapeutic range and that is phenytoin. Thank you very much for watching my YouTube channel. Um, this was the way I did my non-medical prescribing studies. I made a sample questions and based on that, I just prepared, built up on that. So that is way probably, I felt that was useful for me. So that is the sample questions which I made for myself. I've just put it into this. Um, if you if you'd like to know anything about it, please do uh, either send me an email or comment on my feedback section. Um, my next video is about the max sample questions for the non-medical prescribers.